Democratic Party chairs in the 27th Congressional District have picked their candidate to challenge Congressman Chris Collins. It is the district with the biggest Republican enrollment, and Republicans are already on the attack. But Grand Island Supervisor Nate McMurray is getting plenty of digs in as well. He is joining me now from Buffalo to talk more about why he is running. And welcome, Mr. Supervisor, to Capitol tonight and to the race. Thank you for having me. Ah, it is my pleasure. Um, so let's get right to it. Basically, what is happening here is that there were a number of Repu uh, Republicans who have criticized you because you do not live in the district. Now, legally speaking, you do not need to. After and if you are elected, you need to move in, which you say you will. The man that you are challenging once upon a time did this very same thing, though not when he ran successfully, when he ran unsuccessfully against a guy named John LaFalce, who's some from Western New York might recall. So is this to you a viable concern, this carpetbagger problem? Well, first of all, it is bizarre that someone who did the exact same thing and is on the record saying that it's nothing and a empty attack is now using it as his primary way of attacking me. Hmm. The second thing is, I mean, I grew up in this region. I am part of this region. My family lives across the 27th district. My ancestors came here and actually built the Erie Canal that runs through the district. The claim that I'm some type of outsider seems like a serious stretch. So, I mean, if this is the best they can do, I think we're gonna have a, a pretty successful campaign. Well, it's not the only thing they're doing, as it turns out, and certainly we're only just getting started, uh, so goodness knows where we're gonna be in August. That said, uh, one of the th things that we should note, though, is that you used to actually live in the district. These d lines get redrawn, and as viewers know well, every time the census numbers change. So you did at one point say that you lived in his district. You did before the lines changed, correct? And, and in fact, you know, there was times where Grand Island may become part of the district again. There's a reason why they use the word gerrymander, because mm. it comes from the word salamander, and it spins and twists like a salamander's tail. These things get redrawn all the time. And again, I'm not coming from California or North Carolina like Mr. Collins. Remember, he did not grow up here. He's not from here. Uh, this is my home. This is the place where my father built homes. This is the place where my family is and where the people I love are. And it's a place that I care about deeply. So pretend somehow that I'm an outsider who's not connected. It just doesn't make any sense. So one of the things that they did hit you on also is when you first started investigating the possibility of running, you sent out some emails to some Democratic folks and you used government email, which is a big no-no, and you did it on government time. You've since said that that was probably not the wisest idea. Well, it's an, it was before I declared my candidacy, I sent a couple emails, literally, to some people and said, hey, I'm thinking about running, what do you think? Hmm. Now, remember, for a, for a second. He has foiled m all of my stuff, basically, mm. all of my emails. And if the best he can come up with are a few random emails months before I declared my candidacy where I say to someone I'm considering running, it seems pretty desperate. And the fact that he came out so early with these swings shows that I think he's scared. I also, it shows that he's disconnected with the people. I mean, these are things people do not care about. Well, if they I go care about Hillary Clinton's emails. I mean, they're suggesting that you have a Hillary Clinton wannabe problem, right? Well, I think that's what he does. I mean, he clicks his heels and he says, Hillary, Hillary, Hillary. And he hopes everyone forgets the fact that he is under a serious ethics investigation. The fact that he is not here. He has not represented the people of the 27th district. He uses it kind of like a magic wand to try to make people forget all the problems he's facing. He should remember that he's not running against Hillary Clinton. Well, He's running you, against me. You are a, a Democrat, it's, it seems to me, a pretty traditional Democrat, and this is the most GOP dominant district in the state, gerrymandered or not. How is it that you are going to better represent those GOP voters than Mr. Collins does? Well, he has said something that's quite shocking. He has gone on the record and said that he represents his donors and that he thinks about his donors first. I will think about the people of the 27th district first. I am not some guy who's in a country club all day. I'm someone who is from here, who is a supervisor in a small town, very close to the district, who understands the needs and concerns of the people who live here. And I'll be here. And I promise as, the con as your congressman, I will have regular town board meetings where I will visit places like Batavia, places like Warsaw, and I'll sit there and I'll listen to the concerns of the people do so you, I can represent you properly. Do you consider yourself a progressive, a liberal? 
Well, I, cons yeah, I consider myself a progressive, mm -hmm. but I will, I'll change that a bit. I, I'm a progressive in the, in the term that I believe in progress and moving things forward. I don't believe in a revolution overnight. I believe in practical solutions. And I think the people of the 27th district want practical solutions. So they don't care about these, these culture war debates. They care about, do they have places to work? Do their parents have medical care? Hmm. Do they have real solutions that make their lives better? And I think people are sick of this partisan uh, bickering that goes on endlessly on cable news. You know, it's interesting. You, you did mention, I, I want to note, that, that the Freedom of Information request that the congressman had dug up this information regarding your emails. It was actually a PAC, America Rising, it's called. And the reason why I bring it up is because there's going to be outside money spent here. You're talking about a guy who is an outspoken surrogate of the president who was the first congressman to endorse the president. I imagine that if, in fact, he does at some point feel threatened, he will call in some fairly big guns. I mean, America Rising already targeting you says something. You're going to have quite an uphill battle. How funny is it that he's afraid of this little town supervisor that he's got to pull in this big super PAC right off the back? That shows how scared he is, and it shows how vulnerable he is, and he should be worried. Now, we're not going to be able to match him dollar for dollar. He's got some very rich friends, and he's got some very rich donors as he's made clear. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna reach out to the people and we're gonna be consistent with our message. And when he hits me, I am not gonna back down. I believe we're in the right here. We're fighting for what's right. We're fighting for a better Western New York. I'm not sure what he's fighting for. It seems like he's fi fighting for his rich friends and, corpora and corporations that have no connection to Western New York. If you were to be so elected, though, to Congress, how would you be able to work across the aisle? Uh, is there anything in particular that comes up for you policy-wise that you think you would be able to work with Republicans on? We don't know. I mean, supposedly there's a blue wave. We've heard much about that. Midterm course correction is traditional, but we don't know who will be controlling the House come next January. Well, I think as Americans, we need to find shared values, things that we can work on together. Such as? I mean, w well, such as fiscal responsibility, it's something I believe in. As a supervisor, I've improved the fiscal status of our town. We've improved our credit rating in the small town. And I I'm a person from a business background. I believe that business done right and done in a way that, that is reasonable and it takes into, into concern the interests of the people can benefit society. Would you have voted yes I on the tax reform law? Absolutely not especially the fact that it was t clearly targeting Western New York. The fact that it's going to drive people out of Western New York, that's a law you can't vote yes on. But if there's reasonable ways that we can work together, we have to do that for the benefit of our country. Uh, I'm curious, before I let you go, have you spoken at all to um, the Democrats in D.C. or the Cuomo administration? I mean, the governor has expressed a very uh, high interest in helping the Democrats flip the House into their hands in 2018. And he has said that he will be targeting a number of folks, including Chris Collins, with whom he has traded quite a few barbs in recent months. Well, I have spoke to them that we should target this district. This is a district where I've been up and down it. And the, one of the reasons why I decided to run is nobody likes this guy. I mean, people feel he does not care. Well, somebody and liked him because they voted him in. You're right about that. He voted it in. But I think that the fact that there's so many people now, this is a very different time. And with his ethics violations, his problems, his personal problems, his frequent and common uh, miscues on television where he says just absolutely bizarre things, I think people are ready for a change. People are feeling that our country is going the wrong direction. We have to get, there's, uh, go ahead, I'm sorry. So, well, you've spoken to the governor, is that correct? Or someone close to the governor? I'm in constant con contact with everyone I can about this campaign. Well, the reason why I ask level is because level. you're leveling some challenges regarding ethics at the congressman, and the a former top aide to the governor is involved in, in a corruption scandal, a trial that's taking place in Manhattan, and part two of that will be the Buffalo Billion piece. It's going to come up. And do you believe in the Buffalo Billion, or do you think that something wrong occurred there? Well, clearly there's some problems with it. But the fact that the governor did try to focus on Western New York is great. For too long, Western New York has been ignored. It's a beautiful place with wonderful parks and, and green spaces and opportunity. Buffalo should be a strong part of Western New York, as should the 27th District. Mm -hmm. Now, can I speak to every single claim that's been made about the Buffalo Billion? No. Am I proud that the governor has taken the time to focus on Western New York? Yes, I'm thankful to that, and I'll be honest about it. Now, the, the ethical violations of Mr. Uh, Mr. Collins, however, are completely unrelated. Mm. These are things that he did for his private business interests. I think most people in Western New York don't understand it. It's stuff that it's hard to kind of get a grip of. 
but it's very serious. So he was. Go ahead. Well, I'm sorry to cut you off of it, but we're going to run out of time, and I, I'm, I'm fairly certain that sure. that particular topic is going to come up again. I do want to ask, right. though, to, in order to have the opportunity to bring that topic up, you're going to have to be the Democratic nominee. Now, you have been selected. There were other Democrats who were interested. Do you know if those folks are going to be continuing? Will you have a primary fight on your hands come September? Well, I heard that some people dropped out today. I think this is an evolving story, but you know, I'm proud of everyone who's decided to run against Mr. Collins. It's a daunting task, it's a big challenge, but I'm confident that eventually we'll have the right candidate. I'm confident, I'm confident that we can go ahead and we can beat this man. Hmm. Well, we'll probably be seeing more of you, I hazard to guess, and I thank you, Mr. Supervisor, and we'll see you again. Can I say, can I say one more thing Please, in closing? Please, go ahead. Look at, I'm a guy who doesn't like to fight, I don't like to get in fights. I don't, I'm not that type of person. But if he's going to hit me, he better be ready because he's going to get hit back. And we will be covering it. I thank you so much for your time. Thank you for your time.